Hi, everybody. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Tuesday. It's so good to see you. There are so many of you that are already here. I love it. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Colleen, my love. Evelyn, Anita, Laurie, Catherine. It's so good to see you guys. Oh, my gosh. How are you guys doing so far? It's Tuesday, and I say it all the time. It means we've already survived Monday. That's a win. Victory is yours. <laughs> You made it through Monday into Tuesday. Like, if that's not a reason to have a donut or maybe a mimosa for breakfast, I don't know what is. <laughs> not encouraging drinking or eating donuts. Disclaimer. <laughs> Tiffany. Tiffany says, I was happy to find this channel a few weeks ago. I'm so glad you're here, Tiffany. Welcome in. We're glad that you're here. We're so happy that you found us because we love 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 our community here and we're always happy to have new people be a part of it hi peggy hi holly hi amanda so good to see everybody so you guys i apologize i did not send out a text message today um i i don't even know how <laughs> I don't even know how the next three or four weeks are going to work, to be completely honest with you, because I have so much going on and, and I'm not complaining. Like, I don't want that to sound complaining. Like, it's exciting things because a lot of, you know, I'm moving. I'm in the middle of packing. I've got, you know, I have, I'm constantly dealing with emails and all of the stuff that goes along with moving. Um, and so... It, it kind of puts me in a position where I'm like rushing in here right before the live. And it also means that a lot of times, like when it's time for me to send the text message, I just totally forget. And I shouldn't be doing that. Um, so my apologies, if you rely on my text messages to remind you to come to the live, I'm so sorry. Uh, I will do better. <laughs> we'll do better. Just give me some grace through the month of March, you guys, and I promise by April I'll be better because I will at least be settled somewhat and just, you know, hopefully things will go back to normal. But I mean, it's exciting, right? It's exciting. Going on an adventure. That's that's a good thing. Uh, and see, Nicole forgot to. She said, busy day, forgot to remind you. That's okay. That's all right. Um, totally fine. It happens. But I do want to say, uh, speaking of the text messages, a couple of housekeeping things to take care of before we um, get get our uh, project started. So first and foremost, if you sign up for the text messages, which I totally encourage you to do, because once upon a time I had these grand hopes and ideas that I was going to have a mailing list. I don't know what I was thinking, but this girl, I mean, I, I do good to do email and to do like things on my phone. But when it comes to like sitting down and laying out graphics and putting together like cohesive thoughts for a mailing, an email blast that goes out, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> At least I don't. Some of you may, some of you who are running your own personal businesses and are able to do that, like, I don't know what you're having for breakfast, but I need some of whatever that is because I just don't, I just can't. Uh, so the email list is, I mean, the text messaging list is the, is the best way, even on days when I forget like today is the best way to stay up to date with everything that's going on with me. Cause I can just type in a quick little text message and send it out to you. It's completely free on your end. You don't have to worry. I mean, your regular text messaging rates apply. Um, but for the most part, it is, it's 110% free and um, it's a great way to keep up. Like if that's your reminder to come to the live. Uh, the other thing I do want to say about that though, is that it is only a one way communication, just so you're aware. Um, once upon a time, I had it set up so that it was a two way communication so that I could get text messages back from you. I have since found that that makes no sense <laughs> uh, for me. There are over 400 people who are signed up for those text messages. And if a hundred of those people are trying to reach me all at the same time, like my brain starts to smoke, like smoke comes out my ears. And so I have it set up everybody, just so you're aware that uh, it, it is only a one way communication. So you, you get messages from me um, and you, it looks like it's going to send a message if you type in something. It looks like it's sending to, it to me. It is not. <laughs> I just want you to know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, just 
just know that um, if you're sending messages to that, that's definitely not the way to reach me. Um, uh, Susie says, we can push the set reminder on the invite as well. I know, but you know, I just have to make sure that like I'm doing my job and I'm getting you here and I'm getting you pumped up and ready and giving you a little sneak peek. So, um, yeah, but this month, I mean, whoa, things are crazy. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention to you guys now that I have talked about the text messaging, I completely have forgotten what the other thing was. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's something important. It's something that involves Sam. <laughs> If it involves Sam, you know it's important. So you guys, next Tuesday uh, for our regular live, Sam will be here. So you definitely want to set your reminders for that, for sure. Um, he uh, and I are going to be designing with some wonderful beads from his shop. I have not received those beads yet, but I did get the message that says that they will be here. So I'm looking forward to that. You guys know it's always a good time when Sam is in the house. So looking forward to that. I also have a new kit coming out very soon. That is a collaboration with Neele from Silver Silk. Uh, we are currently working on those kits right now. They're getting put together. Like, I don't mean right this second, but I mean, like, it is something that is happening uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, and I believe that's all I need to let you guys know about. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. I feel like there was one other thing, but I just can't remember what it was. Um, yeah, I still do paper too. Betty says she does paper. Susie says she does a planner. I do too. I have, um, I have reminders and stuff set on my phone, which is great. Uh, but I still have to do, like, I literally have a monthly planner and I have to write in it everything, all the things. And I have to write it by hand because no matter how many times my phone buzzes, that doesn't mean that I'm paying attention to it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Peggy says, Sam and Neelay couldn't get much better. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like if I had a miniature Sam and a miniature Neelay to put in my pocket and have them with me everywhere, every day, it would be just magical. Like that, that would just, that'd be, could you imagine the creativity alone? Plus the laughter. I'd never get anything done. I'd be creative, <laughs> but it would never come out of my fingertips. All right. So I'm going to turn you guys around. We are putting together a really fun pair of earrings today. We haven't done big showstopper earrings in a while. Like I know we do big earrings on Feel Good Friday shows a lot. Um, but just as far as like a project, a full blown for the whole show project, that's what we've got going on today. And I love these. These are going to be way too big for some of you. And that's totally fine because just like always, they can be altered. Do they not look awesome hanging? They can all be altered, turned into pendants if you don't want it as an earring or they can be made smaller. That's why we love earrings. So I'm going to turn you guys around and we're going to get started. So... So, 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 so for materials today, you guys, we're going to be using the artistic wire mandrel tool. We're going to be using some 18 gauge uh, German style wire. We're also going to be using some 24 gauge German style wire. I've got my hammer out. I've got my steel block out. Um, so yeah, lots of fun in this project. I really, really, whoops. I really love the way this, these turned out. I literally did these last night, like right before I went to bed. I knew what I wanted the project to be. I just had not executed it. So to have these come together right at the last minute and to look even better than what I envisioned is pretty cool. So let me be completely transparent about this. I saw a pair of earrings very similar to this that I saw that somebody had made um, and were selling on Pinterest. You know how sometimes you get sales on Pinterest? Like it's not all just like inspiration, but sometimes like you can actually purchase the pins that you see. A pair of earrings that looked very, very similar to this was for sale. And I was like, oh, I love that design. I wonder if I could do that and make it my own. So um, if you've seen anything like this before, I didn't like, I didn't invent this. I did tweak it and turn it into my own thing, but I've seen other pairs of earrings like this for sale. So uh, just so you know, just so you know, I'm not like trying to claim the fame on this one. It was definitely inspired by a design that I saw. Okay, so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need some 18 gauge wire and you are gonna need five inches of this wire. So let me grab my ruler. I haven't even pre-cut my wire here because I wanted us to do all the steps together, okay? So you're gonna need five inches. My wire has a little bit of a, do you see that little tiny crook right in the end? I'm gonna trim that off. It to be as straight as possible okay so five inches 
just going to lay that on my ruler here. Mark that with my finger, and I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, trim that off. Okay, so now I have five inches of 18 gauge wire. And I'm going to use my small bell making pliers for this. So you can use your stepped bell making pliers for this. You can even use your round nose pliers for this. You just want to try to maybe mark your round nose pliers so that your loops on both ends are consistent and exactly the same size on both ends. I'm going to use both mandrels of the small bell making pliers to make loops. Okay, so I'm going to grab the tail end of the wire on one end. I'm going to use the smallest mandrel on the tool and I'm going to make a loop. Okay. And I'm not going to break the neck on it. It's, I'm going to leave it just like it is. Okay. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, even up the wire. I'm going to leave it just like that. Just that kind of P shape, right? If you look at it this way, it's a P. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here on the other end. And I want this one to come towards, right? the one on the other end so that when you're looking at it, that's what you've got, right? You don't want one on the top and one on the bottom. They need to both be facing each other. Okay. Now we're going to come in and use the largest part of the tool. So we're going to grab that loop that we just created. And I want to be sure that it's sitting right up against the edge of the bell making pliers. Okay. And then we're going to use the large mandrel to make another loop. So it kind of turns into like this shepherd's hook or an S just kind of depending on how you look at it or what works for you. Right. Um, but that's the shape that we're going for. It's almost like an eight, but like not doesn't close. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on the other end. So again, we're going to be grabbing and we want that loop sitting right up against the tool, right? The little one that we made. And then we're just going to bend the wire so that we have this shape on both ends of the wire. Okay, now this is a good opportunity to go ahead and work hard in these little pieces. Don't work hard in the whole thing. There's really no need to do that. But if you want to go ahead and just kind of be ahead of the game with your work hardening, go ahead and put the ends down on your block and use your nylon hammer or your, um, your rubber mallet or whatever it is that you like to use to work harden. And just go ahead and tap both sides just to kind of make sure that you're going to keep that, that shape. Ginger says, is that the four and six millimeter mandrel? I'll tell you, hold on just a second. All right. So let's double check. I never remember just like right off the top of my head. I believe it is a four and a six, but you know what? Just for the, um, for the record, let's see if we can find my little tool. And we'll measure for sure. I'm pretty sure that's right, though. So, yeah. So, this one is the three millimeter, which is going to give you a four millimeter loop. This one is a four millimeter. So, oh, so it's it's not. It's going to be a five millimeter loop. Okay. Right. Let's double check that. So, this was, this is a three millimeter mandrel. We'll give you a four millimeter loop. <laughs> Just have to do it again just to be sure this is a four millimeter mandrel is going to give you a five millimeter loop there we go okay <laughs> just making sure i got that right because you know me and numbers okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little this little piece of wire that we have here okay i'm gonna hold it on both ends okay and we are very gently going to squeeze both ends. You see, I'm starting to make an arch in the wire. I'm going slow. Okay. And I'm trying to keep it as centered as possible. Um, but we can always adjust. I'm starting to bend that wire just by bringing my hands together. Okay. And I'm just going to keep going. Don't, the reason I'm doing this slow is because it's much easier to correct it if you make small movements um, than it is to just do this really fast and make a mess and then have to try to correct that way. So go slow. Okay. I'm going to bring this all the way together. Okay. Mine's pretty even. One's a little bit longer than the other, but that's okay. I'm not super worried about it. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cross them all the way over each other. 
and bring it down to make a little teardrop down here at the bottom, which is actually at the top while we're working on it, but it will be at the bottom. Okay. Now I've already made one of these. Where's my finished one? I've already made one of these. So I have a loop to compare it to on the bottom just so that they both look the same. But if it's your first one, just kind of decide what you, how big you want that teardrop on the bottom to be. Right. Uh, I want mine to match the one that I've already made. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to curve this. Now, before we do that, let me just say, this looks really cool in a V shape. Okay. So if you don't want to curve it in, if you don't want to curve your edges on either side, you don't have to, it looks really awesome this way as well. Um, but I do want to give mine kind of a, I don't know, it kind of looks like a vase, right? How you see how I rounded it out. I'm going to use my artistic wire mandrel tool to get that, that shape. Okay. So I'm going to bring in the artistic wire mandrel tool. I'm using the one with the circles on it. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the artistic wire mandrel tools this is one of my very favorite uh, top five tools, top five things to have, particularly if you use wire all the time, um, because it is inexpensive, but it is like, it's the most magical thing ever. It's a handle, right? And it has a large handle. So you can use this to shape wire, but then it comes with four different tops on it that you can slide in here. The circle one I use the most, I'm using the triangle one in our hardwired class later today. That's what it was that I forgot to tell you guys about. I'll have to, I'll have to talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, but there's also a square, uh, not a square, a triangle, an oval, Maybe it is a square. I can never remember. <laughs> Let me look. It is a, it is a square. Okay, so you, there are four different mandrels, and then you can see they have all of the different sizes that you can use. So you can make a huge variety of sizes of all of those shapes, which is super cool. I use it for everything. And right now I'm going to use it to form this wire. So I'm just going to place my wire kind of, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four from the bottom. Okay, and I'm just going to place it just like that. So obviously it's not going to sit right up against the tool uh, because it is in a V shape, but I'm going to hold on to it. And then I'm going to use my dominant hand to kind of push the wire up against the mandrel to get that rounded shape. And if it's not perfect, you can put it back on here and do it again if you need to. Like, you can really adjust it, play around with it, get it get it into the shape you want it to be. And you can go between sizes to really get that, the curve that you want. Okay. Now, you can also kind of come in and squeeze with your fingers a little bit, too. And, I mean, it's wire. So you can shape this however you want to really get it into, you can open it up a little bit more. You can close it up, but shape it and make it the shape that you want it to be. Okay. You have complete control over this. It's just wire. You don't have to commit to anything until you're perfectly content with the shape. And then you're going to put it on the block to work hard in it. Now, again, because I already have one made, I want to lay this one on the other one just to kind of compare to see if they are shaped similarly. And if they're not, I can make some adjustments. They're not going to be twins, but I do want them to be as close as possible. Um, so use my fingers a lot after I use the mandrel tool just to kind of help coax it rather, you know, into the shape that you want. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. That's good enough for me. They're not exact but they're, they're going to be perfect hanging, right? Because, I mean, you've got your face between them. <laughs> Nobody will notice. Nobody will notice. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want I want some assurance on this. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it on the block, and I'm going to work harden. Now, just be careful. While you're work hardening, I like to hold that little loop off the side because the wire is, it's, a, it's doubled over, so it doesn't, it doesn't lay particularly flat. So if you kind of hang it off the edge, that helps. Yes, 
it would be a beautiful pendant. So I, like I said at the beginning, these earrings are very large. Uh, you can adjust these and make them smaller. So your components here, you could use smaller than five inches of wire and make the entire thing smaller. Um, or you can just forget it being a pair of earrings and just make one and turn it into an awesome pendant. That's why earrings are so awesome because they can double up or you can make three of them and make a pendant and earrings so you can have a set. It's Meredith in the house. I was just thinking about her. Hi, Meredith. You guys, I'm going to dinner with Meredith on Saturday. I'm so excited. I have not seen my friend in person in so long. I have missed her face. All right, so there is our shape. Now, again, we're going to kind of compare this to the other one. Just in case anything changed while we were work hardening it. Okay, so looks pretty good to me. And we're still going to wire wrap around it. So any little inconsistencies that you have, a lot of times when you coil your wire around your shape, it will definitely help to kind of hide any of the little flaws, right? So having that coiled wire is is more than just decorative. It definitely helps to kind of take away from, from whatever you want to hide. Okay, so now what we want to do is we, we need to do our wire wrapping around it. I'm going to do this with two pieces of 24 gauge wire. I'm going to do one of them in 12 inches and one of them in 12 inches. So it, I just find that it's easier to do two pieces instead of just one continual piece. 12 inches is probably a little bit more than what you need. Uh, but, um, you know, it's better to have more than you need than not enough. Again, I'm using 24 gauge and I'm using the German style wire. That's my go-to for all of my wire wrapping. Though, if you don't have German style wire, you definitely can still do this with your artistic wire. You just want to make sure that you are work hardening. Okay. All right. So I've cut myself about 12 inches of the 24 gauge wire and I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Um... Let's see. Catherine says, I have a question. What ones do you use on the step mill making pliers? Or can... Okay. That's a, that is a good question because not everybody has the small bell making pliers. Some of you have the stepped bell making pliers. So because these pliers, remember when we measured them out, we had a three millimeter and a uh, four millimeter. We're looking for the ones that are going to be as close as possible to that. So I would say you're going to use not the smallest, but the next size up. That's going to be the closest. It's still a little bit bigger, but not. it's not really going to be enough to, to, you know, be a huge, huge difference. And then, so this one here, not the small one, but the, the other one, which I'll just go ahead and give you what the measurement is. So that's the four millimeter. Okay. And then I would use on the other side, the one that is five millimeter. Okay. So you're going to use the four millimeter and the five millimeter. If you're using the small bell making pliers, it's the three millimeter and the four millimeter. Okay. That's to me, I think those are the closest, the closest ones without going too big. All right. So now I'm going to lay my wrapping wire down here across the surface of my component. I'm just going to kind of hold on to it with my thumb and I'm going to start wire wrapping and you, you can start on whichever side you want to. Okay. You don't have to start on the same side that I do, but starting down here at the V is definitely what I recommend. I don't, I don't like to start up here. It's just easier to measure, kind of see things. If you start at the bottom and work your way, I'm just going to kind of adjust the tail of my wire just a little bit. Okay. Just kind of hold it out of the way, moved it back here to the back. All right. So I'm just wrapping around the component with my 24 gauge wire. And we're going to do several wraps. And then we're going to stop and make ourselves a little loop. So on the sample here, you can see. I made about a fourth of an inch of wraps and then I made a loop so that I could hang a dangle from it. So I, I'm going to keep this one here for comparison so that I, I put them in the same place. Uh, but if you are just starting out, you want it to be about a fourth of an inch of wraps before you make that loop. So if you don't have anything to compare it to and you're making the first one, right? Okay. 
And I'm also trying to keep those wire wraps as nice and neat as possible. You can see my first little wrap here is not super clean. I can always unwrap it and trim it off uh, when we go back to kind of tidy everything up. I'm going to lay this one here just to compare. All right, we're definitely ready to do our loop. So you can use your bell making pliers for this if you want to, but I like to use just my regular uh, round nose pliers for this because I want my loop to be pretty small. So I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to hold on to the component. Okay, now I want to follow the natural path of the wire, meaning this wire is coming from the back and around over the top of the component, right? So I want to continue that pattern as if nothing has changed, even though I'm actually gonna wrap around the edge of my pliers to make that loop. So because it's coming over the top, then that means that our natural path of the wire is going, is gonna be a go to the back. Does that make sense? So I just guide it around the edge and then continue my wire wrapping. So when you take it off of the tool, you have this little loop here. Right, so one wire is coming over the top and one wire is going to the back, not both wires on the front because it'll throw off your wrapping, okay? So we've got our little loop. Now I'm just going to keep wrapping and wrap all the way up the side of the component. I was just thinking about how long it's been since I've seen Meredith in person and it, it, the last time I saw her was in July so it's been a minute it's long overdue cannot wait really looking forward to it like we see each other in zoom and FaceTime and stuff but that's just not the same thing as like being there you know <laughs> Okay. So JC says, I missed it. What gauge is she using for the coil? So I'm using 24 gauge wire for the coiling. You can use 26 if you want to. I like the 24 the best for this um, just because I'm making a little loop here. I just find that the 24 is a little bit more sturdy than the 26. If I make a little loop with my 26, it's just so weak, you know, because it's such a thin wire. So uh, not my, not my favorite. You can use it. I just feel like sometimes that loop gets pinched. All right. So now coming down here where my tail is and I'm going to trim off and I'm going to cut another piece of wire about 12 inches to do the other side. And we just want to make it match, right? So we want to make sure that our loop is pretty much in the same spot on the opposite side. Okay. All right, so go ahead and cut another piece of the 24 gauge wire and we're gonna start out exactly the same way. We're gonna bring our wire down here and lay it across the component. <laughs> lay it across the component, right? And just holding on to that little tail there. And we're just gonna start wrapping on the other side. Okay, so again, you just want your, your wraps to be consistent. Clean them up. And if you need to, use your tools, right? That's what they're for. Come in there and squeeze those wraps together if you need to. Okay. So it looks like we're pretty close to the same spot. I'm gonna wrap again. Okay, so again, I'm gonna make another loop. I'm gonna hold with my round nose pliers. I'm gonna follow the same path of the wire. Okay, so 
round nose pliers are coming in. I just want to place them right up against the wraps that we just made, right? I forgot to say that on this side, but I, I kind of took for granted that everybody was following that. Just put it right up against the wraps, okay? You're going to guide the wire around the edge of the tool and to the back, so following the natural path of that wire, right? And then wrapping around. And I wrap a few times before I take it off of the pliers, just so that I know for sure that that loop's not going anywhere, okay? And then I'm just gonna finish off with the wrapping, going all the way up the side of the component. I'm gonna scroll back just for a second, see if I missed. Tiffany says, I always wondered how to get that loop. This is great to see. I'm so glad, I'm so, so glad. Okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't, I didn't miss anything. All right, couple more wraps here and then I'm going to trim off. And I like to trim off on the back, obviously. Um, that way there's not any, um, raw edges on the front trimming as close as I possibly can and if I can't get super close then you definitely can come in with your pliers and kind of push down to tuck in the end of that wire and then you want to do the same thing with your tail here where you got started so you want to come in and trim as close as you possibly can okay all right so there we go now at this point, you can do whatever you want to with this. This makes an awesome pendant. I'm making some big, large and in charge earrings out of this. Um, but this, this is a cute little component that you could do a lot of different things with. In fact, if you wanted to, um, I'm just going to use the example here and then one that I made last night as well. You could put these as the center of a necklace, right? You could do a couple of them right here in the front of just like a really cool wire necklace, put some beads right in between each one of these and then bead out the rest or do like a chain if you wanted to and hang all your dangles. Like you could make a really great bib statement piece with these components kind of laid out um, as the focal. You don't always have to do what I'm doing, right? I just like to show you the little components and then let you go crazy with them because you guys I just want to inspire you and you guys always come up with the most awesome things. All right. So now we're going to add our beads to ours. So I've got some of these drops here. I love these. They're so, so pretty. They're these black faceted drops. They're black, but they have that AB finish to them. That is really blue and gold, which is a kind of different AB finish. Uh, I've got one large one and three of the small ones, and I'm going to wire wrap them directly to our component. So I'm not going to use any jump rings here, but if you are more comfortable with adding jump rings and you don't want to, you know, mess up your component, you can, you definitely can just use a jump ring to go between, but I'm going to use head pins. I'm not going to make my own head pins today. I thought about it, but I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to thread my component or my bead down onto my head pin and I'm going to start a wrapped loop. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers. I'm grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. That way, when I take it away, I have the perfect amount of room for wire wraps. I don't have to pre-measure or anything like that. I let the tool do all the work for me. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers to start my wrapped loop. So I'm going to take that wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. And now I'm going to rotate so that I can take that wire over to the other side because the pliers were in the way until I did that. I'm going to take it off of the tool and I'm going to thread the tail of my head pin here through the loop on the center of my earring down here on the bottom. So I'm just going to snap those two together and then I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers. Sam! Sam's here. Danielle's here. Meredith is here. Sam is here. Like I have beady royalty here today. I'm just saying. <laughs> 
All right, now I'm going to do my wire wraps between the loop we created and the top of the bead. And I'm going to do about three wire wraps. I could probably do four, but I don't want to push it because I don't want to accidentally crack the top of this bead. So three wraps it is. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, trim off the excess. And if you need to tuck in, just take your pliers and very gently squeeze so that you don't crack the bead, right? All right, so there's that. And I'm going to do the same thing on either one of these loops with the smaller beads. So I'm going to take a smaller drop, thread it onto a head pin. And I'm going to do another wrapped loop. So chain those pliers, bending the wire. Marianne says it's a party. And Danielle, don't forget Danielle. Danielle's here too. <laughs> She's here too. Up and over. Okay, rotate. Take the wire over to the other side. All right, and then I'm going to same thing, take the tail of that wire and I'm gonna stick it through the loop that we made. Grab that with my bent chain nose pliers. Okay, and then make sure everything kind of stays out of the way. And again, I'm gonna do three wraps. I could do four, just don't wanna push it. Okay, I'm gonna come in with my cutter trim off right we're only missing Neela I know he should be here I think he's off doing his live too he does his lives on Tuesdays oh you can see how far away that one I don't like that I don't like that I really did need to do four there so you know what because I'm such a perfectionist I'm actually going to cut this one off and I'm going to redo it I don't like that at all and it doesn't hurt for you guys to see wrapped loops so we're going to do it again. Okay. So let's do that again. <laughs> so says this looks like a hardwired project. No, no, no. This one's pretty, this one's pretty tame. We haven't done a cool earrings project here in a wire, in a while, in a wire. That's too funny. Um, but you know, speaking of the hardwired, <laughs> perfect segue. All right, I've got, I've got enough. Whoa, I've got enough for four. Just gotta be careful when you do four if you've got room because you don't want to crack the top of your bead. Uh, so speaking of the hardwired group, you guys, the hardwired group is open for enrollment all week this week. Uh, so if you're interested in coming and joining, the hardwired group is my paid Facebook group where we do. Um, Projects that are a little bit harder, I don't want that to scare you away. If you're still a beginner, we still go through things one step at a time. Um, and we have special guests. We've got a lot of fun things that are planned coming up this year. So we've The Hardwire Group's been around for about a year. Um, and now that we kind of have the, we're in the swing of things, we're, we're starting to add new extra things to the group. Really looking forward to that. We're going to be bringing back the Maker Mysteries, if you guys remember those. Um, and that'll just be a hardwired exclusive. So if you want to come and join, we're open for enrollment once a month. Right now is the time to do that. And uh, you got to be sure you answer the questions. Okay, so in order to be a member of the group, you go over to the hardwired group and you sign up to be a part of the group, right? You throw in your hat. Uh to, to be a member, you ask to join, you have to answer the questions, okay? There are no ands, ifs, or buts about it. You have to answer the questions when you uh, submit to be a group member. Otherwise, we don't know where to send your invoices to. We don't have any way of communicating you with you. And we love you and want you to be a part of the group, but we're not going to chase you. I mean, I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. You got, you have to. There's no way to be a member if you don't answer the questions. Just trying to see it. I want that. I want those beautiful, <laughs> the beautiful AB to face forward here with these beads. There we go. Look how pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay, so we're going to do one more of these beads. This one's going to hang by a piece of chain when we bring our chains together here at the top. Yes. And Sam says, I'm the guest this Friday. You better sign up. That's right. So we have special guests um, and Sam's our special guest this month. And it is 
always fun, always fun when Sam is around. Okay, so this one I'm not gonna do. Well, I am actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna wire wrap it directly to my pre-cut piece of chain here. So I've got three pieces of chain. I just need to lay them out because I don't believe that they're all the same length. I gotta figure out. I'm gonna just thread them onto this wire here for a second so that I can look at them. Two of them are the same length. One of them I believe is a little bit shorter. Could be wrong. They could all three be the same. Oh, look at that. They're all three the same. <laughs> so it doesn't matter which one you pick, uh, but we're going to pick one of them and we're going to start our wrap loop. We're going to, we're going to wire wrap our bead directly to the chain. So up and over. Okay. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side before you do your wraps, take the tail end of your wire and thread it through the last link of one of your chain pieces. Okay, and hold that with your bent chain nose pliers, do your wire wrap. So there are no jump rings in this project um, in this part. We're going to use some jump rings here in just a second, but for the most part, most of this is just wire wrapped directly. All right, coming in with my cutter, I'm going to trim off, tidy it up a little bit. Okay, so there's that. That's going to hang here in the middle. These are very like Art Deco earrings, right? They're giving me Gatsby vibes. I don't know how the rest of y'all are feeling about them, but that's kind of what I'm, it's kind of what they're making me think of. Okay, so I've got my other two chain pieces. We're going to hang those two chain pieces from the larger of the two loops on either side. So the bigger one that's closer to the top of the earring. Okay, so we're going to take a very small jump ring. We're going to thread on one of our pieces of chain, and then we're going to thread that on to one of those larger loops. And we're going to close that back. We're going to do the same thing on the other side with another piece of chain. <laughs> Ashley says, Sarah's book of jewelry is endless. Wait, Sarah's a book of endless jewelry ideas, just endless. I, I know, it's so funny because people are like, how do you keep coming up with things? I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know where it comes from. I think like maybe, maybe I get downloads in the middle of the night. I'm not real sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just go with it. All right. So I'm going to use one more jump ring and that's going to kind of connect everything together here. So I'm going to open the jump ring and um, I'm going to thread on one of the chains. Okay. On the side, I'm going to thread on my chain with my middle hanging bead. And then I'm going to thread on the chain on the other side. And then one last thing before I close this jump ring, this jump ring has a big job, right? It's holding on to all kinds of things. I'm going to thread on our ear wire and then I'm going to close it back. And that's it. Right? How fun are those, right? They're so different. They're definitely big. I mean, you got to love big earrings. And if you don't, you can change these up and make the components smaller, go with smaller beads. I mean, you don't have to do large and in charge. I love big earrings for myself to wear, but I also love big earrings because it's easier for you to see visually. But you can always take these projects, turn them into pendants instead, or turn them into focals in your, your other jewelry designs, or you can just make them smaller for earrings. Okay. Um, let's see. One other thing I do want to show you guys though, uh, just for those of you who are interested in joining the hardwired group, uh, just give you a little sneak peek of the kinds of projects that we do. This is our project for this week. So we are making these wire woven earrings. This is our hardwired weekly project. So if you're interested in doing things like this, this is what we do, right? We make these really awesome earrings. And these are using the artistic wire mandrel tool, some 26 gauge wire. So if you're interested, come hang out with us, come be part of the hardwired group. If you pay your invoice, you can get in uh, right away and be part of our, our, our project this week if you want to. All right, I'm going to turn you guys around. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Hello again. <laughs> now I'm going to try these on for you because I mean, they just look different. I'm just saying, just saying. And I think these are fabulous. Daydreaming Designing Jones says these are great for Mardi Gras. I agree. Okay. Tell me they don't look different on. Like when you see them laying flat, that's a, they're okay. They're great. But when you put them on and let gravity do its thing, those are some showstopper earrings. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Sometimes, sometimes I make things and I'm just like, wow, I did that today. <laughs> uh, yeah, these are all mine, right? In fact, I'm going to wear these for the rest of the day because they're just fabulous. And I'm all about the sparkle and the fabulous shape of those. So, so cool. If it's too big for you, just, just size it down. Size it down if you want to, or turn it into the most beautiful necklace you've ever seen. Uh, if you don't like the crystals, like if you're not a sparkle person, that's okay. Use your favorite gemstones, put a tassel on the bottom, and call it a day in your boho chic. So lots of different ways that you can you can turn these into your own design, but mm -hmm, I'm feeling that right now. I'm feeling like I need to I need to go get my flapper attire on and go do my thing. <laughs> I don't know what that would be, but you know. <laughs> oh, gravity is a friend to earrings. <laughs> it really, it really makes a difference. It's funny because when I take pictures of things like last night in particular, when I take pictures, first of all, I'm not very good at taking jewelry pictures. I'm just not. I do the best that I can. I'm always in a hurry. I just do it. Point, click, done. Um, but when I take the pictures and it's a laying down picture of earrings, I'm always like, mm, people are not going to like that so much because it looks so different on. And this was one of those pairs where I was like, the photograph just doesn't do these justice because they don't look as good until they're hanging and, you know, doing what earrings do. So always keep that in mind when you're looking at my projects and you're like, I don't know about that. Just wait for it. Wait until you see gravity do it and then see what, <laughs> then, then make up your mind, right? whatever, whatever. All right. That's it. You guys, thank you so, so much for joining me. Hey, happy Mardi Gras to all of you out there. Um, don't forget if you want to be a part of the hardwired group enrollment is this week, this week, you guys, and you get to see these fun types of projects that are just a step up from what we do here. Right. Uh, I try to keep things relatively easy here on these lives and then I take them up just a little bit. Not a lot. Don't be intimidated. Please come and hang out with us. We have a great group. We do a lot of fun things and we would love to have you be a part of it. You can sign up to pay monthly or you can do it quarterly. If you sign up quarterly, you get a big discount. So, of course, quarterly is the way that I I, I think you get the best value. But, um, you know, you do whatever works for you and you can cancel at any time. So don't feel like you're obligated to stick around. Um, anything else? can't think of anything. Just remember that uh, Hardwired is open. Sam will be with us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time for a fun live. I hear we're working with Purple and I'm looking forward to that. So Sam will be in the house. Friday is our regular Feel Good Friday show at 1 p.m. where all of the jewelry is super easy, instant gratification, easy to recreate, and you can buy the kits in my Etsy shop. So looking forward to that. Set your reminders. And until then, you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. I'll see Hardwired Group at 4.30 p.m. Bye, guys.